This article is about the STIC. The STIC stands for Systemic Therapy Inventory of Change. The STIC is a measurement and feedback system, and as such it has two major components. The first component is the measurement component, and there are two sets of questionnaires in the STIC. The STIC Initial, which clients fill out before, every, uh, before the first session, and the STIC Intercession, which clients fill out before every session after the first. Uh, clients fill these out on any kind of internet platform that they have. They can fill it out on a computer, they can fill it out on a laptop, they can fill it out on a uh, cell phone, a, a, a tablet, and uh, as soon as they fill it out, the, uh, um, it, it goes right into the STIC uh, database. Um, the uh, STIC uh, initial consists of six system scales. Individual problems and strengths measures individual functioning. Family of origin measures family of origin functioning when the uh, adult were growing up. Um, the uh, relationship with partner scales measures relate uh, people's relationship, partners, marriages, etc. If they're partnered, family household measures the family functioning with parents and/or children and the uh, and child problems and strengths measures the functioning of each child within the family and relationship with child measures the functioning of uh, the relationship that each parent has with each child in the family. Um, the intercession has briefer versions of each of those six system scales but it also has three alliance scales. Uh, 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 an alliance scale for uh, family therapy, an alliance scale for couple therapy, an alliance scale for individual therapy, each of which take a multi-systemic perspective on the alliance. Um, each of the scales has three to eight subscales or factors. So the scale kind of gives you the perspective, the, the total scale score of what's happening, let's say, from 5,000 feet up, whereas the factors get down to 100 feet. And then if you go down to the items, basically you're right on the ground in terms of what, what, what we're able to look at and measure. The um, feedback system uh, takes the stick data, and as soon as the client hits send, the therapist gets an email saying, you've got data and we give the therapist a quick feedback re report that focuses on the most the areas that are most problematic and then um, all of the data are conjointly presented in terms of the wife is wife's data is next to the husband's next to the son's data so you can see you can compare how people are functioning uh, within uh, just at a glance uh, the, this study um, had several goals the first was to test the invariance of the stick factor structure across different samples. And to do that, we got a clinical sample uh, of out outpatients coming to a uh, clinic, uh, university-based clinic, but that also treats a lot of people from the community, um, a, uh, and a sample from the National Opinion Research Center at the University of Chicago that was a random representative sample of the United States. And we tested the factor structure of the stick, looking at the factor structure of each scale, as well as the scales as a whole, um, uh, on the clinical sample and the uh, normal sample. And what we found was that the factor structure held up, and we had at least adequate configural, and in cases, metric invariants, uh, which are explained in the article, across the two samples. Um, what the second thing we did is we tested the validity of the stick and could it discriminate the clinical and normal sample. And I think with one exception um, on one subscale, every other subscale differed significantly in terms of its score on the clinical sample and the normal sample. So it supported the validity of the stick uh, in order to do that. The last thing we wanted to do was we wanted to norm the stick. So because we had significantly different clinical and normal samples, we were able to compare each client's score and come up eventually with distributions where you had a the distribution of the clinical sample and the distribution of the normal sample. And you could see where they crossed and we took that as the clinical cutoff so we could begin to differentiate the clinical range and the normal range for each scale, for each scale and subscale which allows clinicians to know, is this something I need to worry about? 
If it's in the normal range, I don't. If it's in the clinical range, I do. And we could even measure severity in terms of how far it's into the clinical range. We believe that this article presents sufficient evidence that uh, we believe the stick can be used as an effective measurement and feedback system to study and provide feedback uh, to therapists um, uh, in couple, family, and individual therapy.